A Tent in Agony by Stephen Crane Four men once came to a wet place in the roadless forest to fish. They pitched their tent fair upon the brow of a pine-clothed ridge of riven rocks, whence a boulder could be made to crash through the brush and whirl past the trees to the lake below. On fragrant hemlock boughs they slept the sleep of an unsuccessful fisherman, for upon the lake alternately the sun made them lazy and the rain made them wet. Finally they ate the last bit of bacon and smoked and burned the last fearful and wonderful hoe-cake. Immediately a little man volunteered to stay and hold the camp, while the remaining three should go to Sullivan County, miles to a farmhouse for supplies. They gazed at him dismally. Well, there's only one of you. The devil make a twin, they said in parting malediction, and disappeared down the hill in the unknown direction of a distant cabin. When it came night and the hemlocks began to sob, they had not returned. The little man sat close to his companion, the campfire, and encouraged it with logs. He puffed fiercely at a heavy-built briar and regarded a thousand shadows which were about to assault him. Suddenly he heard the approach of the unknown, crackling the twigs and rustling the dead leaves. The little man arose slowly to his feet. His clothes refused to fit his back. His pipe dropped from his mouth. His knees smote each other. Ha! he bellowed hoarsely in menace. A growl replied, and a bear paced into the light of the fire. The little man supported himself upon a sapling and regarded his visitor. The bear was evidently a veteran and a fighter, for the black of his coat had become tawny with age. There was confidence in his gait and arrogance in his small twinkling eye. He rolled back his lips and disclosed his white teeth. The fire magnified the red of his mouth. The little man had never before confronted the terrible, and he could not wrest it from his breast. Ha! he roared. The bear interpreted this as the challenge of a gladiator. He approached warily. As he came near, the boots of fear were suddenly upon the little man's feet. He cried out and then darted around the campfire. Ho! Oh, said the bear to himself. This thing won't fight. It runs. Well, suppose I catch it. So upon his features there fixed the animal look of going somewhere. He started intensely around the campfire. The little man shrieked and ran furiously. Twice around they went. The hand of heaven sometimes falls heavily upon the righteous. The bear gained. In desperation, the little man flew into the tent. The bear stopped and sniffed at the entrance. He scented the scent of many men. Finally, he ventured in. The little man crouched in a distant corner, and the bear advanced, creeping, his blood burning and his hair erect, his jowls dripping. The little man yelled and rustled clumsily under the flap at the end of the tent. The bear snarled awfully and made a jump and a grab at his disappearing game. The little man with now without the tent felt a tremendous paw grab at his coattails. He squirmed and wriggled out of his coat like a schoolboy in the hands of an avenger. The bear bowled triumphantly and jerked the coat into the tent and took two bites, a punch, and a hug before he discovered his man was not in it. Then he grew not very angry, for a bear on a spree is not a black-haired pirate. He's merely a hoodlum. He laid down on his back, took the coat on his four paws, and began to play uproariously with it. The most appalling, blood-curdling whoops and yells came to where the little man was crying in a treetop and froze his blood. He moaned a little speech meant for a prayer and clung convulsively to the bending branches. He gazed with tearful wistfulness at where his comrade, the campfire, was giving dying flickers and crackles. Finally, there was a roar from the tent which eclipsed all roars, a snarl which it seemed would shake the stolid silence of the mountain and cause it to shrug its granite shoulders. The little man quaked and shriveled to a grip and a pair of eyes. In the glow of the embers, he saw the white tent quiver and fall with a crash. The bear's merry play had disturbed the center pole and brought a chaos of canvas upon his head. Well, now the little man became the witness of a mighty scene. The tent began to flounder. It took flopping strides in the direction of the lake. Marvelous sounds came from within, rips and tears and great groans and pants. So the little man went into giggling hysterics. 
The entangled monster failed to extricate himself before he had walloped the tent frenziedly into the edge of the mountain. So it came to pass that three men, clambering up the hill with bundles and baskets, saw their tent approaching. It seemed to them like a white-robed phantom pursued by hornets. Its moans rift the hemlock twigs. The three men dropped their bundles and scurried to one side, their eyes gleaming with fear. The canvas avalanche swept past them. They leaned, faint and dumb, against trees and listened, their blood stagnant. Below them it struck the base of a great pine tree, where it writhed and struggled. The three watched its convolutions a moment and then started terrifically for the top of the hill. Well, as they disappeared, the bear cut loose with a mighty effort. He cast one disheveled and agonized look at the white thing and then started wildly for the inner recesses of the forest. Well, the three fear-stricken individuals ran to the rebuilt fire. The little man reposed it by calmly smoking. Well, they sprang at him and overwhelmed him with interrogations. He contemplated darkness and took a long, pompous puff. There's only one of me, and the devil made a twin, he said. <laughs>